Today on the fast lane car, we simply drive up a mountain in absolute comfort. Hey guys, welcome to a classic TFL old versus new video. And tell me, what are we driving? This is the new Range Rover Sport PHEV. What's a PHEV? <laughs> it's the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And in front of us, the camera vehicle, is our old Land Rover LR3. And we're going to take this, actually we're going to take both of them, over to the start of the Ironclads, which is now open because it's springtime in Colorado and a lot of the snow is melted. But it will be a fun comparison because this vehicle is in some ways the future. Yeah, it's, um, it's a hybrid and it does run on electricity alone. However, there's a caveat. We were initially going to find out how far we could go on electricity only, but because it's a hybrid, it won't let us go into pure electric mode. And why is that, Tommy? You know, honestly, I have no idea, and it's frustrating me to no end because there's a number of conditions that have to be met. The battery has to be charged. The yep. battery is almost completely charged. Yep. EV mode but button is pushed. Yep. Um, climate control is off. You know, there's no excessive demand on climate control. Auto start stop is on. Why aren't you engaging EV mode? There's no reason why you shouldn't be engaging it. Uh, we did look in the owner's manual and they said if the ambient temperature is too cold, that it will not enable EV mode. What's the ambient temperature out 53. there? 53. Yeah, um, and let's face it, Tommy, we've had a pretty much train wreck of an experience taking any electric vehicles off-road at this point right. that we've done. We've taken the Tesla Model X, which we have, with air suspension off-road and that was a train wreck because well it didn't have enough grip it used a ton of energy and I was afraid of puncturing the battery case <laughs> and starting a forest fire yep and now this vehicle uh, which is supposed to be electric we can't get to just go in electric mode so I know this vehicle won't go into EV mode if you're in rock crawl setting yes or sand setting yes or in the regular auto setting right this yes. is your regular street mode and we should explain kind of the range on the hybrid system 19 miles on full electric it says 24 right there it does so the car will actually read over 19 but the EPA says 19 miles on full electric and what's the fuel economy when you're on your electric power. well when you're running on electricity yeah. and gasoline combined when yeah. you have charged the battery yeah 42 mpge okay and when the battery is depleted 19. now of course one of the things that we do want to test when we get to the ironclads actually is this vehicle's off-road worthiness right so that's right. why we bought it here the question tommy is are we going to take it up the razor rocks well so there are two good things yeah um first of all it's got a rock crawl setting yep. and a low range, which yep. is awesome. That's all great stuff. And it also has a height adjustable suspension with really three different off-road heights. So when you put it in off-road one, that's about 1.4 inches above normal. Off-road two is a couple inches above normal. And then there's even an extended mode for when you get stuck. And that really raises up the ground clearance a lot. So there's a lot of impressive clearance in this vehicle. Overall, I think it's time that we got out of this car yep. and actually compared them side by side. Yeah, let's take a look. Tommy, we made it to the start of the Ironclads, but there's an important question I have to ask you. Do you know what the biggest difference between those two vehicles is? Yeah, probably the snorkel and the push bar. You are wrong, sir. $87,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's which, right. Which means that we won't be afraid to get the other one a little dirty and maybe even a little bit broken when we go up that trail. Probably the biggest difference is just the design. The Discovery here is squared off and boxy and looks kind of old school while this new Range Rover is swoopy and smooth. But actually when you start pulling things away, they're pretty similar underneath because the Range Rover rides on fully independent air suspension that's height adjustable. And that's exactly what the Land Rover Discovery here rides on as well. They both have terrain response and they're both pretty much unibody vehicles. So actually underneath the skin, they're not really all that different. All right, Tommy, this is called new versus old. So let's take the new one up first and see how it compares to the old one. Oh, look at that. Is it electric? EV mode has decided to make a comeback. All right. Well, why don't you head up okay. and I will kind of stand along the side and see how this thing is doing from the outside while you're driving it. So here's what I'm going to do. Yep. Uh, rock crawl mode is the best mode, but it'll disengage EV mode. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it in auto. Yep. The suspension is raised up. Yep. So let's see if we can do the quietest hill climb ever. And we're not going to do the razor rocks just because 
Uh, I don't want to tear the bottom out of this Range Rover. Yeah, it's not ours, and it's uh, a lot of money that we don't want to owe to our friends at JLR. So we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of go around that and get to see how we do in the old one. Charging up the Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid is in theory super simple because here at the front of the vehicle, I can pop this open and you can see your standard charge port. This is called a J1772 charge port and this accepts level one and level two charging. So basically your standard home wall outlet as well as something like this. Now this is called a charge point and you start to see these pop up all around the country and these are level two chargers and the reason this one's locked is because it's broken and I'm seeing this more and more frequently. This is very frustrating. But in theory, I could use this charge point, plug in the Range Rover, and it would take under three hours to go from completely empty to completely full. Now, if you're using your standard 120 volt outlet at home, it's gonna take probably 14 hours to go from empty to full. Stuff to keep in mind for sure. All right, so how does the hybrid system work in the Range Rover plug-in? Well, you've got a large battery pack in the rear, and basically that has enough power to propel this vehicle 19 miles according to the EPA. And then in the front, you have a small gasoline engine that will work as their standard hybrid for when that battery dies. Now getting in the car and starting it up, it will start off in primarily EV mode, meaning it will use up the battery until it's completely depleted, at which point it will start using that gasoline engine in the front to fill the gap in power, of course. But there are a couple other modes. There's an EV button down here, which will lock the vehicle in electric mode so that the gas engine doesn't kick on at all, of course, until the battery dies. And then if we go here in the screen, we've got my EV pages. Up here we have a button called save, and when you engage that, that's gonna operate the vehicle primarily in gasoline mode. So if you're on a highway, you can save your electric power for when you get to the city. All of this is actually very confusing. I think they did a really bad job incorporating the EV technology into the Range Rover, because in other plug-in hybrids, you've got all the controls in one location. But here, we've got EV mode here, and then for some reason, we've got our save mode in a completely different screen. I'd much prefer just to have an EV and a save button right next to each other, that would make life so much simpler. All right, I'm stoked. It finally decided to kick into EV mode. Now I have the terrain response on auto, which will adjust in theory for the terrain. EV mode selected, and my suspension is raised into off-road mode as well. Listen how quiet that is. Absolute peace. Now I'm actually really excited about the onslaught of electric off-roaders like the Rivian and the Bollinger and this Range Rover. Of course, there's a plug-in electric Jeep, which isn't out yet. There's a Rivian, which isn't out yet. The Bollinger isn't out yet. So in terms of actual electric off-roaders, this is it, because the Model X certainly isn't very good off-road, and neither is the e-tron. I'm just gonna do a little commentating as he goes up the ironclads, and we'll see how this thing does as the pure electric off-roader. I love that instant torque that it's offered to the electrics. It really is nice to just be able to squeeze the throttle and have perfect modulation, which is really cool. And actually, we're going up a pretty steep grade here, and still, no gasoline engine kicking on. So, these are our steps. Let's see if it'll go up the steps. All right, keep coming, Tommy. Whoa, that was close. Now you're good. Oh. It says recommend low range, but that'll kick me out of EV, so I'm just gonna stay in high range. Nope, it gave up. Well, there you have it. It went like uh, 20 feet before it turned on the engine. Whoa, look at this. It said select low range, transmission is overheating. All right, well, low range it is. Oh man, well, that was fun while it lasted. Of course, low range multiplies the torque, so I guess you can overheat the transmission even in EV mode. There you go, the more you have it, the more you know. Man, these, these Range Rovers are so good off-road. They don't get a lot of credit, but they really will do super well. Coming up here, let me show you the Razor Rocks. And of course, the reason they're called the Razor Rocks is because, look, they're shaped like razors. And uh, we've taken our trucks up here. We've taken all kinds of vehicles, but we're not gonna take this thing up here. I think the biggest difference between these two cars, besides the price, of course, are these. Yep, where the rubber hits the 
in this case dirt. These are Scorpion All Seasons, which are fine. They're, you know, typical All Season tires with a little bit of off-road grip and cred, but these are all-terrain tear grapplers, basically an off-road specific tire. So when it comes to allocating power, both cars do an admirable job, but this tire will have a lot more grip than this tire. But then again, on the road, this is probably the one I want. Off-road, this is the one you want. All right, I'm not gonna do the Razor Rocks. Interesting, you can overheat the transmission in EV mode. That's something I did not know. It's kind of jerky, Dad, off-road. How's it doing? It's kind of jerky. It's like the gas engine's kind of fighting the electric motor. Feels like they should be able to work together a little bit better. I am driving as smoothly as I can, gently modulating the throttle. It's like the EV motor gives me a burst of torque and then the gas engine kicks in and they're not really playing all that well together, which is definitely interesting. So what somebody did for some reason was they uh, put a bunch of rocks into the uh, tire tracks and I think that would be really bad if Tommy went in there and actually this might get really hard we'll see all right so for truth or dare hill climb I have gone into my rock crawl setting low range of course we've kind of ditched the whole EV idea at this point we're using good old-fashioned dino juice and man, when you are using good old-fashioned dyno juice in low range, it's amazing how capable these things are. I wish it could uh, air it down, but not much it can air down with 21s, if we're being honest. So we're leaving stock tire pressure. Now it's going to get interesting to see if you can get through the next part because it gets pretty crazy right there. So the way the four-wheel drive system works in these Land Rovers, what? What are you freaking out about? Hey, I'm not stuck. I just can't see. Is there a... Are you stuck or are you okay? No, is there a rock or anything there? Let me look. Uh, no, you're just... You're just out of the... Yeah, keep going. You got it. That's it. Man, even on these all seasons, go. going up the snowy hill climb, it's working really well. I'm super blown away. Underneath the hood of this Range Rover is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that makes 296 horsepower. And those scary orange wires over there let you know that there's also a high voltage battery pack, a 13.1 kilowatt hour pack that makes 141 horsepower when it sends its power to an electric motor. Now the combined system output is 398 horsepower. So more horsepower and in terms of fuel economy when that battery pack is charged 42 mpge which is pretty good. However when that battery pack is depleted which happens way too quickly this Range Rover is left with just 19 mpg combined. So while it is better than the old one this poor four cylinder has to lug around so much weight that 19 isn't actually all that brilliant. So let me show you truth right there. Dare. You can tell Dare is dry. Truth isn't. So he's going to try the harder way because that's what we do here at TFL. We go for the uh, more difficult line. So the way these Land Rover Range Rover four-wheel drive systems work is they are full-time four-wheel drive, meaning they have a center diff which can lock or unlock all automatically and then depending on the drive mode it will modulate the center and the rear uh, diffs to lock and unlock as need be which is great advanced stuff. However, the underbody protection is not nearly as good as I would like it to be. Ooh. Don't want to take out a sidewall, just a little lot there. I right, go, go right, Tommy, it's okay. There you go. There we go. There is no sidewall to take out in this Range Rover, unfortunately. Well, a little bit hair raising there, but the Range Rover made it up. Oh, 
Well, I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. The $93,000 Range Rover made it to where only rental razors dare to go. How about that, huh? So going down, I can use Land Rover's or Range Rover's extremely advanced hill descent control system. Dad's out there spotting me. And it's actually speed adjustable, so I can adjust the hill descent control to many, many different speeds from slow to fast. So there we go. Just crawling along. Oh, yeah. Man, these are so good, even in all seasons. It's amazing what the technology will do to this vehicle off-road. I can't imagine, once again, how good it would be if Range Rover actually put a small wheel and tire combo on this, or at least a small wheel with a large tire. One thing that both of these cars do better, I think, than any other vehicles in the world is the ability to combine off-road and luxury at the same time. So there is no other vehicles that I can think of, be it a Land Rover or a Range Rover, where you can, in ultimate comfort, in ultimate luxury, be completely at ease going off-road. Now, having said that, this car cost $87,000 more than that car because that one cost $6,000. So when they're new, there is gonna be some apprehension about potential trail damage. But if you've got a boatload of money and you don't care about that, there is nothing better than being completely enveloped in luxury while you're off-roading. And these two cars both have that in common. All right, and breathe, because I'm not rock crawling in a vehicle worth more than a house anymore. This is five grand or about six grand of Land Rover, so I can run it into things and not have to mortgage away my life to repair it. Here comes Tommy in what we affectionately call Rhino, the LR3. Why do we call it Rhino? Well, because it snorts when you raise the air suspension, and the first obstacle is going to be the steps before we get to the razor rocks. So he lifted up the truck, and boy does that thing go high. So, LR3. Now I'm starting off immediately in low range. That one we started off in high range because I wanted to demonstrate the EV mode. And this has no EV mode, none whatsoever. This is an old school, gas burning, naturally aspirated V8. There's not a whole lot here to save fuel. There's no eco modes, there's nothing like that. This is old school. Uh, I also have a lot of clearance air suspension jacked up here, just like that other one. And a little bit extra clearance because this has a two inch lift, or these little lift rods, which increase the height a little bit, which means these steps should be no issue whatsoever. Now I do have a mild, mild off-road tire on here, but a 16 inch rim, which is just awesome. Grip, and let's see what else, climb. Climb. Oh yeah. No worries. I don't know if you heard it there, but it just snorted. Now we're not airing down because unfortunately we sold our old LR2, which had the air compressor built into it. So we still need to get one of those put in here so that we can actually air back up. This Land Rover Discovery 3 uses an old school 4.4 liter naturally aspirated V8. No turbos, no electrification, just one 12 volt battery and a bunch of injectors. This is mated to a six speed automatic transmission and the EPA said that back in 2006, this LR3 was rated at just 14 MPG combined. All right, Tommy, you ready for the Razor Rocks? You know, on camera, they don't look that uh, razory, but they are. Let me give you just a quick fly over with this little handy cam. All right, here he goes, Razor Rocks. Drive, low range, rock crawl. All right, now there was an optional HD off-road group in these LR3s that gave you a proper rear locker. We do not actually have that. 
So when we get it articulated, it's all going to be brake based. Come on, there it goes, there it goes. Woo! You came so close to that tree. How am I doing on clearance? So close, you're good on clearance. Oh Look yeah. Those open diffs. Yeah, yeah but it works. works. It worked, yeah. Typically anything short of a rear locker won't get you up here. This one did though. I am actually oh. Time you to spoke to too soon. Your, keep your foot in the throttle and it will figure it out. It's just not very prettily. Is that a word? Prettily. Alright. Good job, Land Rover. Yes, so terrain response. More than just a gimmick, I must say. In rock crawl mode, it really does break the wheel that's spinning and force power to the wheel with traction. You just gotta plant your foot in it and wait. Stepping inside the Range Rover, oh, it's just such a nice place to spend time because there's leather across the dashboard, there's leather on the seats and they're so soft and everything is just great to touch and the materials are brilliant. It really is probably the best road trip vehicle anywhere. However, the infotainment system here is a little bit of a disaster. It's slow to respond. I find it surprisingly hard to use. Here for the climate controls, they wash out in the sun. And then your center display here is very high resolution, but once again, super hard to use. So while it's a great place to, I don't know, drive a thousand miles across anywhere in the world, once you start having to mess with things, it gets a little bit tricky. Coming inside the interior here on the LR3, well, it looks great, and then you start touching things, and everything is just this horrible cheap plastic, and it's just not very well screwed together, and things creak and rattle, and I know it's old, but, oh, just what happened in here? They took such a great design and just cheaped out on everything. So, it's still very comfortable, the seats are still very soft, but everything you touch is just not very premium. The one thing though that is better in this LR3 actually is the infotainment. It's an old school radio with buttons and knobs, which means you don't need an electrical engineering degree to figure out how to change the radio. And the climate control, believe it or not, also knobs. Super fast, super easy. Even though this may look kind of crummy compared to the new one, I prefer this infotainment and climate control any day over the week. All right, so a couple of observations compared to the Range Rover. This is a little bit cushier. The ride is softer, partly because I think the air strings are kind of worn out and partly because the sidewall on the tires, it just has a much bigger sidewall patch. And I can also do stupid stuff like this, like ride the groove in the LR3 because I don't care about it as much. And there's a little bit more ground clearance. But in all seriousness, this is much easier to modulate, to drive smoothly. Uh, I think that there needs to be a little bit more work in that gasoline engine electric combo programming. It works great on-road, off-road, it's a little herky-jerky. So that could be improved, but yeah, I mean both of them are really good off-road. How's this boy doing? Oh, it's such a, such a pillow. I mean, yeah. you just like whoa, whoa, fall asleep in this off-road, it's so easy. Alright, you're gonna do truth or dare? Probably, definitely dare. Yeah, I think so too with these all-terrains. I don't know if this has more ground clearance, but I think it does. Yeah, because a little bit of a lift. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, underbody protection, this is a little bit, well, certainly cheaper to replace. Yeah. And I think a little bit more as well, especially in the front area. All right, good luck. All right. All right, there goes Tommy up there, of course. Today on the fast lane car, we simply drive up a mountain in absolute comfort because this Land Rover could not make this easier or softer if it tried. This is 14 years old. It's a pretty darn steep hill even though it doesn't look like it on camera. And there's no problem. It's full time four wheel drive, low range, select a mode, any mode really doesn't matter. Just start cruising and it will do it all day long happily. Oh man, these are, these are more comfortable than I think the Land Cruiser honestly. I mean yes the Land Cruiser is far better made but just in terms of downright comfort you can't beat these. The LR3 just seems to be a little bit more of a natural athlete up here. It's a little bit higher on its tippy toes. It feels like there's nothing here that's really challenging it, whereas the Range Rover was challenged and overcame 
but nevertheless challenged. All right, so going down the hill, I do have a hill descent control, which I'll activate now. Oh yeah, works like a dream. Not quite as sophisticated as a Range Rover. So the terrain response in this works well. It breaks the wheels that are spinning, some power to the wheels that have traction. It takes time though, that new Range Rover is so fast, it's in instantaneous. This one's a little bit slower, it takes a little bit more time to think about it, but once it's done thinking, it figures it out and uh, you, you go just about anywhere. Now, speaking of suspension, they both have four-wheel independent suspension, which would usually be a problem out here for articulation. But Land Rover uses a system called the cross-linked air suspension, which is essentially a tube that connects various ends of the vehicle together so that when one wheel articulates, the other one is pushed down. It actually emulates a solid axle. It's not quite as good as a solid axle, but it works pretty darn well. You know, you know, I, I kind of had to uh, help you over those rocks in the Range Rover, but this thing you just did without any hesitation. Well, part of it's because I just I really don't care, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a big part of it. And I trust the vehicle more because it's got so much more sidewall. I'm not going to pull off a 21-inch wheel from its tire. This is just going to. I got to tell you, uh, Ratbird here was a little scared, Tommy. Who's Ratbird? That's Ratbird right there. He's no. our he's our uh, LR3. Rhino mascot. They get along very well, rat bird and rhino. Why is it Bert? Because he looks like a rat bird. Look. He's just a little scared. He was like, yeah, I was scared. Oh, you hear rhino. He wasn't scared. <laughs> So I think what we've learned today is that EV mode simply does not work very well off-road in the new Range Rover plug-in hybrid. However, it does have an amazing four-wheel drive system when the gasoline engine kicks on. Low range, air suspension, it's just about all you need. Wheels and tires are terrible for off-roading. However, swap those out and I think you're going to get pretty close to the off-road capability of Rhino or 06 Land Rover. So which one would you rather have off-roading? In current form, the LR3 all day long. Those 21s are just useless out here. You know, the biggest difference, Tommy, is $87,000, right? right? And really that, you know, is what counts when you're out here and you're potentially damaging these vehicles. And maybe seven years from now when this thing is much more affordable, then I think people might be taking it off-road. But for right now, I'll take the LR3, the old all day long. Well, as always, this is Roman. And Tommy, head over to TFOcar.com for the latest and greatest in old versus new off-road reviews. Now, on-road, I'd probably go for the new one. Oh, for sure. Absolutely.